Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining another Black Belt session. Do you use technology in your classroom or you would like to know how? This evening, Prince Patrick Osadebe, one of our Black Belts from Kano, Nigeria, will be talking about technology. Over to you, Mr. Patrick. Uh, thank you, Ms. Fatima, and uh, good evening. Good morning, uh, good afternoon to everyone here. Nowhere from different time zones. So I say good day to everyone. You're welcome to this, another weekly session. And straight away, without wasting much time, like Ms. Fatima said, we'll be talking about integrating technology into our classrooms. We're in the 21st century. And one thing we should know is that this century or this time we are, techno everything is about technology. So we need to be aware of certain tools that we can use to make our teaching better and how to go about at least getting our hands on these tools. So I'll go ahead, uh, share my screen and let's keep the ball rolling. I believe we all can see my screen. Yes, we can see it. All right. So the topic is technology in classroom. That's transforming traditional teaching, which is the ancient teachings, the old teachings we have been have enhancing the power of technology. So in this presentation, we are going to look, how do we take ourselves out of out of the traditional way of teaching and into the modern way with the way our forefathers have been doing it and now go back into the way the present world is doing it so without wasting much time i want us to start off on a very fun note and <laughs> I would like to say that it is something that most of us might not expect, but let's get prepared. What I'm about to give is just five questions. Five questions, I call it tech trivia. Five questions, let us see how well do we understand, how well do we uh, know about technology, how well do we use technology or do we hear words about technology and say, we know this is tech related. So without wasting much time, these are the questions. So the first question is there, what does the word STEM mean? Second question, what does LMS stand for in the context of classroom technology integration? Watch term refers to the use of electronic devices to assess and interact with learning materials. What does BYOD stand for in the classroom setting? And which term describes the integration of video conferencing tools into the classroom? Now, let's just hear. Let me have your response in the chat. You can just say one, you can just Answer them straight away. Yes, I'm waiting. Mind you, I'll be giving the answers at the end of the lesson. At the end of this session, I'll be giving the answers out. Uh, somebody says uh, one number one is B. Uh, STEM choice is B. Okay. Okay. <laughs> LMS choice is A. I'm, a, I'm only saying to people, yes, I need to see more answers. Yes, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. STEM is B. Wow, that's good. Uh, I love that. I love the answers coming in. I love the answers coming in. 
<laughs> but nobody here is attempting number four and five. Nobody is attempting number four and five, yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, everyone is getting the number one, number two, uh, but I've not seen anybody attempt number three, number four and five. Wow, uh, somebody has attempted number three. <laughs> that's good. That, uh, sorry, number four, that's good. That's good, that's a good one. The number five, <laughs> number five, anyone? <laughs> Somebody said number four is C. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I want to clap for everyone that has attempted and I want to say that yes, everyone has really tried. And I must say that, yes, we have conversant with tech-related words and some tech tools. So we'll co go on into what we have for today. Now, the introduction, if you look at it, if you look at the picture there, you will see that the world is digitalized. The world is digital. Everything now is at the palm of your hand. Everything is just at your fingertips. And when we say integrating tech tools into the classroom, what do we mean? Integrating technology means using gadgets like computers, tablets, and the internet to help us learn. Now, it's like you bringing a tool, a toolbox that has everything, everything that you can, that you need to make learning very easy, fun and in fact, make it so, so explorative for you. You can explore different diverse areas. Now, when you do this, when you bring in all these different gadgets, all these different tools to bear in the classroom, you are thereby going into what we call integrating technology. That means bringing technology bringing technology, combining technology into the educational sphere. Now let's go on. Now let's look at the statistics on technology. The statistics on technology usage in education. Said over 90% of educators worldwide use technology in some form in their teaching practice. Over 90%. That means today, everything we do everything as educators we do, there is some form of technology in it. Another thing says that more than 70% of students report that technology helps them learn at their own pace. You find out that students now go home, they've, they have some technological tools, they have some gadgets, they have some sites that they can go and study on different things. And when they are, when they, uh, learn from this thing, it helps them gain insight into what they are being taught in the class. Also, around 80% of teachers believe that technology enhances student engagement in the classroom. When students have the knowledge of technology, it helps them to at least have that uh, relationship with their teacher that, yes, they can be able to there is a collaboration full start between the teacher and the students in the classroom. Then ever, over 60% of educational institutions worldwide use learning management systems for online courses and resources. Learning management systems. These are tools that bring to bear online programs. These are tools that helps you get access to online materials. What are those tools, we'll be looking at some of them in the, in the course of this session. Then lastly, approximately 85% of students use smartphones or tablets for educational purposes. 
approximately 85% of students use smartphones or tablets for educational purposes. Many people are going out of the fact that, yes, let me just Facebook, let me just go for, on social media for the fun of it. Many people are now using these tools for what it is meant to. And as educators, we need to make sure that we are bringing to bear why these tools, why as we are integrating it into the classroom, why they need to use it. And that brings us to the benefits, the benefits of integrating technology in teaching and learning. Now, let us start. The benefits, I had to, I saw so many benefits, but I narrowed it down to those five benefits. Number one, increased access to educational resources and information from anywhere and anytime. You all agree with me. The One Million Teacher Program is some is something like a learning, it's a learning platform that wherever you are in the world, you have access to it. You have information that you are gaining from it anywhere and anytime. You can wake up in the middle of the night and you will still be able to work on it. Anytime you like, you can still go in it and work on it. That is one of the benefits of integrating technology in teaching. Another thing is enhanced student engagement through interactive multimedia content and digital tools. The advent of smart bots, the advent of uh, YouTube, the advent of videos and so many learning tools Moza book uh, and so many other things have made teaching contents more fun and more enjoyable. That you as a teacher, you don't just go into the class now carrying papers and, and, and so what not. You have these contents downloaded and just put on the smart board. If there's no smart board, you can have them put on a projector or on a laptop and students go through them and they are excited about what they are seeing. Another thing is personalized learning experience tailored to individual student needs and learning styles. With the advent of computer, with the advent of technology, students, you can now teach students in a way that yes, it can meet their own needs. You can teach them at their own pace. If they can't learn in the school, of course, there are many learning tools that you can teach them outside the school. And it is technology has made it easy that you as an educator now, you don't have much strain on you trying to say, OK, I am trying to do so much at little time. You have the time is so much sufficient for you now that, yes, you can meet up to what the student wants and at the end, you are able to give out what actually the curriculum was. Then fourthly, improved collaboration and communication among students and teachers through online platforms. These days, many uh, schools go about their results preparation through using some learning management systems, through some applications that help them to collect results, to interact with teachers, uh, to interact with parents, paying on school fees, and so many other things. All these things is to foster collaboration with parents and their uh, teachers and also the students. Parents don't need to now so much be on ground in the school. They can get access to the school and get to know about their student and their children's performance just by going onto the platform. Then lastly, preparation of students for the digital workforce. I was jokingly telling a, a colleague of mine in the school some time ago, I told him that, look, a time is coming that school will go extinct, that everything will be done from the system. And if you as a teacher or as an upcoming educator, do not have that learning skill or that technological skill to deliver technological 
learning to people. You'll be phased off, you'll be phased out. So technology is important. Technology is important. Let everyone learn about it because it is very important. Now let us go on. Now let's look at types of education or now types of educational technology. There are various types of educational technology, but it's broadly divided into two areas. And the first form of educational technology, before I go into it, how many of us, how many of us, if you have ever made use of any of the technological tools uh, shown on the screen, just indicate on the chat. We have the Duolingo, we have the Khan Academy, we have the Photomath, we have Quizlet, we have ABC Mouse. If you have ever made use of any one of them, just indicate on the chat. Uh, yes, Cynthia said all of them. That's good. Yes, more answers. Yes, have an opportunity to make use of all of them and many others. And they are exciting tools. Yes, can. Khan Academy and Duolingo. Yes, Gabriel says Khan Academy and Duolingo. Currently on Duolingo, Juliet. Very nice, very nice. Very nice, Khan Academy. Ah, most, <laughs> seems like many people, many people use Khan Academy. <laughs> wow, Khan Academy again. Khan Academy, Khan Academy, ah yes, for, First one, Quizlet from Mr. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Okay. All right. Now, all these tools are referred to as educational apps. They are referred to as educational apps. These are apps that, yes, you can download or you can go on to your browser and go to their website to visit, but mostly they are downloadable apps. You can download it to your smartphone <laughs> and you can download, you can, hello, please, can we mute our mic? Thank you very much. Uh, they are downloadable apps. You can download them to your smartphone and also you can download them to your system, your laptop. And for some schools that uh, have the smart board, you can also install them on the smart board. Now, these educational apps, like we said, their main function is just to simply help learning out of school, to help learning, make learning easier. Teachers can easily go on them and like the Quizlet, put quiz on them. You can put quiz on them and Students can, at the comfort of their home, perform the uh, perform the tax on the quiz and submit the answers. Now, the Photomath tool for some people that find it difficult to learn maths. The Photomath tool. When I got to see that app, in fact, it really blew my mind. That all you just need to do is, if the app is downloaded on your phone, you just need to have a math question scan the mask question using your camera onto the phone and the photo app solves it and gives you the step-by-step -step guide. Now for someone that has maths phobia, you can easily teach yourself, learn more about maths. It is mostly tailored to maths. So there are many apps out there, many educational apps. As educators, let's please try to get our hands on most of these apps. Go online, research on various apps. What apps can help me teach better in my school? Now, the second types of educational technology we have are what we call the online learning platform. The online learning platform. And these are websites that you can visit. They are websites that teach you, educate you, train you, on various aspects of life, various aspects of education, creativity, and all you think, all you can think about. 
there are so many, there are so many to name, but I have a few examples here and with their websites outlined. After the session, the, uh, the slide will be shared on the platform so that you can copy out the website, go out there, improve your learning, improve your knowledge on different things. Of recently, I started learning about AI and it was through LinkedIn that I was able to gain more knowledge into how to create AI prompts. Many people have heard of AI, but many people feel it's just about, okay, I just put my information on the AI. And you'll find out that sometimes the AI does not give you what you want. That is because you have to understand the intricacies of AI prompts. The AI has some specific keywords it's looking for in your in your text. And if it's not there, it will just give you what it feels is similar to what you want, not actually what you want. So you can learn about this on Coursera, on Udemy, EDX, LinkedIn Learning, and also Khan Academy. All these sites are wonderful sites to learn from. And from the LinkedIn Learning, the LinkedIn Learning, if all of them, most of them are payable, yes. Most of them are payable sites, just a token. And you are learning for something that you can spend millions of dollars, naira, and pounds. So what are you waiting for? Please go out there and learn. Now let's look at effective strategies for integrating technology. How do I, as a teacher, how do I go about bringing technology into the classroom. How do I go about bringing the technology into my class? But before I list out what I have, let me hear from us. What do you think are the strategies? What ways can you as an educator bring technology, integrate technology into the class? Yes, let me hear from us. What ways can we as educators integrate technology into our classroom. Uh, okay, somebody is speaking. Yeah, we can integrate technology, for example, by you can give an assignment in class and ask the learners to research. And then they give their feedback during the oh, lesson. Thank, thank you very much, Martin. I love that. That is a good one. As Cynthia says, using the right tools for teaching. Yes, uh, using the right tools for teaching. Yes, that's a nice one. Okay, let me let me contribute. Okay, I yes, thank by you. Typing that you want us to type, so that's why I just typed. <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead. Then. this um, effective strategies for integ integrating in technology. You have, yes. Number one, you have to understand your learners first mm -hmm. before you can integrate um, technology into the classroom because there are different types of um, tools for you for okay. different age um, for different age age range. For example, okay. for a secondary school student, you can tell you can tell them to you can come up with a PowerPoint presentation, or you give them something to discuss about for them to go and use PowerPoint to do it. Whether that has to do with project learning, project based learning, yeah. Yeah. then you can also use the flip and uh, the flip method, which is the flip classroom, whereby you can send their resources at home to learn, then come back to class to discuss. There are so many wow. ways. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a nice one. I really appreciate your contribution. Well, now, the way there are so many ways, but you have to understand that before you integrate technology into classroom, you have to start with clear goals. What do you want to achieve? What are you trying to bring to bear with the use of this technology? What are you aiming to get? What do you want to add? What is your objective? If you don't have a goal in terms of what you want to achieve from bring integrating technology, please don't start. 
because at the end, it will just be as if, okay, because others are doing it, let me also do it. And you'll find out that at the end of the day, you cannot continue on it. Secondly, you must make sure that you provide training. Don't just integrate a technology and assume that, yes, okay, everybody must know it. Even as educators, even if you're bringing it to the school, ensure that your colleagues know about it. Ensure that the school knows about it. Make sure that everyone is fully trained on how to use it, how to deploy it, how to make sure they can handle any questions that arises from it. Thirdly, you foster collaboration. You encourage your collaboration among other teachers. Don't just feel that, yes, you know it all. There are people out there that know it better than you. Of recent, I, I got to learn about <clears throat> an AI design tool from someone at least that is close to me. And it was a welcome development and additional knowledge to me. So our collaboration, don't think that this person does not have the knowledge you are seeking for. You might be surprised that that person even has that knowledge more than you. So foster collaborative uh, attitude between you and other people. Then use a variety of tools. Explore different educational tools and explore different online tools, online learning platforms. Make sure that, and please, in the aspect of using a variety of tools, don't use so many. Start off with at least one or two uh, technological tools. Make sure that the students have mastered it. Make sure that the school have mastered it. The school has, it has become part and parcel of the school program before you now introduce others. Then lastly, evaluate and adjust. <clears throat> the evaluating and adjusting brings to bear, okay, has this tool met its, uh, the goal I set? Has this tool achieved what I want? In that vein, if that tool has achieved what you want, if it has met the conditions, that you desire, then you can go on to now bring another new tool to bear. Now, mind you, everything that has a plus has its own challenge. Technology is not just perfect. There are some challenges we, can, we have to face when we want to integrate technology into the classroom. Among these challenges, the common challenges in technology is one, not having enough computers or internet access. In places where uh, internet is poor or you can't have computers, it will be a daunting task trying to in, uh, implement uh, technology integration in classroom. But in all this, there is always a way. Two, the problems with technology not working correctly. Yes, sometimes you have difficulty that Yes, you might see that, okay, this appliance or this tool is not working the way you want to. Or it might be giving off a problem that you don't know how to solve. So this is another common problem. Then difficulty in understanding how to use, how to use the technology. There is difficulty when you are not knowledgeable about the tool you are using. Then of truth, you can be able to uh, implement them. Now, what are the strategies we can use to overcome the above challenges? The strategies, one, teachers can learn more about technology through training sessions. Sessions like this and many other sessions that the One Million Teachers program offer or various online programs offer. You can learn about technology, how to implement them, even in areas, remote areas, where technology or internet access cannot be, you will learn how to implement this. Another uh, strategy to use, you find alternative solutions when technology doesn't work, like using pen and paper. If technology cannot give you what you want at that moment, please don't say, okay, the class is closed for that day. Please revert to the pen and paper. 
then when you get back, try to fix that problem and continue the, uh, from the next day. So don't say that ah, if the technology doesn't work, that means everything for that day is over. Then lastly, offer extra help or support for students who are struggling to use the technology. Make sure you teach students if they are struggling, if they are trying to see, okay, that I am not being able to use this thing. I'm not able to use this thing, sir, ma, I'm not able to use this thing proper, properly. Please be patient enough to show them how to use it. Don't as prima them. Didn't I teach you in class? And did I explain it? To, no, you're only demoralizing such students. And no matter how much you try to make sure that student gets interested in using that tool, he'll later on use that tool for the wrong motive. So let us make sure we offer them help. Now, how do you assess the impact and outcomes of the use of technology in the classroom? How do you assess? One of the things you, we said is that when integrating technology into the classroom, you must have clear goals. Now, those goals will be assessed later on, but how do you assess them? How do you know that these goals I have set, they are meeting the objectives, they are actually working. These goals that I've set, they are actually giving me the results I want. Now, when we talk about checking how well technology helps in class, we use methods to see if it works. Here are five ways we do that. Number one, through surveys. You can ask students and teachers questions to know from them what they think about using this technology. Don't just feel that everybody, because you have introduced this thing, that everybody likes it. Don't think that way. Always have a mind that, look, whatever I am bringing, I should also ask the people, is this thing okay with them? Are they okay with it? Do they want it to continue or do they want it to stop? Another way we can assess the impact and outcome is by observation. Watching how students and teachers use technology. Watching, is, are these people excited? Are they excited about using these tools? Are they excited about technology being brought into the school, into the class? Do they feel happy about it? Because one thing we know is happiness shows, then test scores. Look at how students are doing well on their tests after using, of course, one of the ways that you can do that is by giving students tests, something like true Quizlet. You can be giving them random tests. Now from those tests, you can rephrase the questions you have given them and still set them on pen and paper. And if those students' performance are high, you are sure to know that, yes, these students are really using technological tools. I know of a student, I know of a student in my former school that used Quizlet. She used this, it to set her own questions. And most of the time when I give tests, I see her scoring, uh, scoring 40 over 40. And I was like, let me ask her, and that was when she told me that she sets at least uh, different questions for herself, knowing that at least no matter how, out of the 20 or 10 questions that she said, two or three must come out. And that is a plus to her because she has gained insight that this technology can help her improve. Another way is attendance. How do students, how do students, how often are they interested to be in class when these technological tools are being put in place? Do they want to come, do they want to come into it or are they running away from it? Then participation, how are they participating in taking this, in using this technology inside the class and outside the class? Are they participating actively in when you have Google Classroom there? Do they partake of the 
exercises? Do they read the notes? Do they uh, go about doing the um, activities you set out there? All these things, when you do all these things, it helps you. Then lastly, we should know that by using these methods, we can figure out if using technology in the classroom is making a positive difference. When you apply this method, all this to assess the impact and outcomes, you are sure to know that, yes, this thing I am doing, this thing I am bringing, this technology I am introducing, is it good or is it bad? So when you do this, you will know from there. Now that brings us to the next step in concluding this session. In conclusion, as we navigate the landscape of modern education, leveraging diverse technological tools, such as Scratch for coding. Many students want to learn Scratch these days, uh, learn coding. And Scratch is a very good tool for learning coding. And before I move on, how many of us have ever used Scratch or come across it? If this is your first time of hearing it, or this is, you have ever used it, let me see on the chat. Yes. If you have ever used it in your class or in teaching students or personally on your own at home or in any way. Okay, somebody said my first time to hear about it. I, yes, Priscilla said she has used it. It's a very wonderful tool. Even I have it on my system because it's a fun way of learning coding. Okay, just hearing about this, that's good. Uh -huh. Okay, that's good. Many of us have seen it and heard about it. Okay. Okay, so for those of you that are just hearing about it for the first time, please, after this session, go out there, go online, go to Google, search for it. It's a free app. It's a free app. You can download it, install it on your, your system and go ahead and use it. It's not something that you pay for. It's a downloadable app, but just make sure that you are downloading the right version for your system, the right version for your system. Okay, uh, can we still see my slide? Hello? Okay, then the I next one. Okay. Can you see I the slide? See slide? No, no, no. No slide. No. Okay, can you see it now? No. no. Okay, sorry, just a minute. Sorry, let me just correct something here. Just a minute, please. Sorry, it seems that I'm having a difficulty sharing my slide. Uh, well, let me just, I will be sharing the slide onto the, well, let me just let us in conclusion, I'll just say that uh, we have the Google Classroom, the WhatsApp, the Zoom, Google Meet, and Kahoot and Quizlet for learning. So any of these tools can be used for learning. and our, what you can do is start exploring technological tools. Try using them in your lessons and see what works best for you. If you want more information, make sure you reach out to other educators to know what you can, what you can do. Look for online resources and courses, courses 
and keep learning and improving. Don't just stay at one place and feel that, okay, no, this thing, I know this thing and I can, I am good at it. Be sure to explore. There are various tools out there that you can use to learn. And as you do that, I tell you, you will become better and better at what you do. Thank you so much for listening. If there is any question, can just signify by your hand and let's take the questions. Thank you very much, uh, Prince Patrick. It was very informative. I was trying to see if I can share your slides with you, but I'm having issues, like I said, with my laptop. So, but I think you've covered most of the things you intended to cover anyway. Yes, my I did. Yes, yes, you've covered most of it. Thank you very much. So if you have any questions, you can type it in the chat or you can unmute and speak and ask your questions regarding our technology in the classroom. Any questions? Okay. Well, yeah. no questions. It seems the it seems the oh. session was well understood. Yes. Yes. Hello, hello everyone. Hello. <laughs> okay. I want to sound. Uh, hello. Can I speak on? Go yes, on. Go, go on. on. Go on. Okay. I want to thank uh, Patrick for the wonderful section. But I want to say that uh, one of the problem of uh, this technology, though you mentioned it in the course of your presentation, some schools don't have what it takes. Some schools don't have uh, steady lights. Like in Nigeria, there is no steady lights. So some schools don't have, and maybe the cost of pouring uh, the generator these days is making that there is a time limit to when the generator will work because of the consumption of fuel. So technology is something that no one can do without because it has come to stay because it makes learning easy, it makes teaching easy, make everything we are doing so easy. But the problem we are having is the devices itself and also the source of powering the devices. If not, it's something that everyone should embrace. So as you have also exposed us to these new uh, devices, we will go and check on it, try to download it and learn more. So I want to thank you so much for always doing amazingly. Thank you and well done. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very, very much, much um, Ijoma, remember. Yes, I, I um, Availability of electricity, availability of uh, the resources, the computers, the iPads, uh, availability of internet in Africa. These things are a challenge, but we can still make do with the little that we have. Even if it's just yeah. your Android phone, you know, try to make do with what, what you have. And gradually, you know, we can't say we're going to solve the electricity problem or the uh, internet connectivity problem in one day. But let's still embrace this new uh, um, uh, technology that is coming. It's supposed to enhance our teaching. It's supposed to make our teaching better, it's to make understanding better for, for children. You know, even if it's that, oh, you do your research on Google, or you go, you can go to a computer center, print some things out, or, you know, show the children something on, your, on the screen of your phone, something that you think they wouldn't have access to knowing what it looks like or what about on your phone, um, you know. Uh, during COVID, everybody had to resort to technology, whether it was Zoom, whether it was WhatsApp. We all had to teach somehow, even some people radio, television, for the local school. So um, there, is, uh, there is this understanding and 
you know, awareness of technology or just creating that awareness. Yes. I remember I saw online a teacher that drew, um, the, drew the Microsoft uh, thing by hand, a teacher in Ghana, <laughs> and it yes. went viral. The, ch the, the children did not have access to a computer or to electricity, or to, but he drew it with chalk on the board. The whole, um, you, you know, uh, uh, format of, of Microsoft Word. So uh, these are the lengths we have to go to in Africa to try to create that awareness and that access to technology. Thank you, Gloria. Um, I think Gloria, thank you. Uh, in, remember. In Victoria, yes, Hello. remember. Hello, Hello uh, Ethel. Go ahead and speak, Ethel. You wanted to speak. I'll go ahead and speak, Ethel. We are hearing you. I said I want Mr. Patrick for the integrating technology into our teaching is a very interesting way of impacting knowledge. Um, some of our schools might not have this facility. But like um, Fatima rightly said, we can start in a small way, maybe a class at a time. For instance, if I'm using Android and there is a television, even if it's one in the school, I can use mm. cast on television and show some of the content that I want to use. I use it when I wanted to teach um, um, AutoCAD and it worked perfectly for me. And my students, mm. they are up to now, they are very happy about that when they see the tutorial and they do it practically it's it gets into them and is something they will not let go so it's very good and we are open to learn more so we are saying thank you for the lecture and we will continue to learn thank you very much uh i think one of the things we should know about technology is that technology has come to stay and the truth of the matter is that no matter how remote the area is, little, little applications, once you try implementing these things step by step, gradually, you will find out that it will become something that, yes, the community will begin to buy into it. And once people, one of the things that makes technology expand is when it has impact, like I said, when you have a clear code goal and you are able to assess that this thing is making impact. Of course, once it's making impact and the community is seeing that impact, they will join you to make sure that yes, they uplift it. I have seen such happen in my former school before I left the school. Of course, we started just with Google Classroom and Quizlet. And before long, before I left the school, many parents were already buying into it. Uh, please uh, set this for us on so that my children will have something. It kept their children busy. We can set like 100 questions on Quizlet and these children were so, so in, in touch with that because they were seeing something that is creative, something that is fun to them. Not having to bring paper, right, 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 right. They feel it's stress, but when it's easy to pick these things, Yes, so definitely we should understand that everything is a step-by-step -step process. And like somebody asked in the chat uh, that if electricity shortage and just like when we I was presenting and it's not, please, like I said, if you are teaching with a tech tool and it goes off, please revert back to pen and paper. Don't feel that uh, because technology has come, and paper is going to sleep. No, pen and paper will outlive everything. So pen and paper is always plan B. When it fails, technology fails, revert to pen and paper and make sure that you make it interesting that students know that yes, this thing that we are not able to finish, we can still continue next. And just to please, Fatima, I'm just trying to answer some questions here. And 
one other question somebody is saying, what are the problems we can face during using of technology? There are so many. There are so many. Power shortage. But one of the things I, one of the biggest problems I tell people is, please uh, don't be constantly, uh, don't constantly use these tech tools, especially your laptops, smart boards, and phones, because one, the rays from these things, they can affect your health. So be mindful of your health while using these tech tools and also ensure that students are also aware of this. So once you know all these problems, read about how to tackle them. And I tell you, you can be able to deliver what you want. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, somebody, somebody asked a question on the slide. We have technology with us. How can we control cyber crimes? <laughs> well, technology, cyber crime is something that it's something that it's people are trying to control. It's not something we can fight easily. Of we can't fight it easily, but at least we can protect this. One, try to make sure that any equipment you have, you have, please, I may, I ensure to tell people, don't go for a cracked antivirus. Go for a bought antivirus, a paid antivirus. Pay for it. It is worthwhile because it will enable you have full protection, full paid protection. It might be expensive, but at least it's the best. That is one way of tackling because that antivirus gives you a protective firewall against hackers and against online threats. So, and one of the best antivirus that I can easily recommend to everyone is Beats Defender. Beats Defender antivirus. It's one of, it's the best antivirus for uh, uh, for your laptops, for your Android phones, please don't download antivirus. Just mind the kind of files you download because every smartphone comes with its own inbuilt antivirus. That's what many people don't know. So be very careful of downloading an antivirus. You might end up crashing your smartphones. Thank you. Um, also, I, I actually wanted, uh, you're talking about the uh, hardware. Also, our students, we need to create that awareness uh, about not talking to strangers online, not going yes, to unsuitable yes. websites. This is the danger that some people have that, oh, if they give their child, uh, on their child a device, they are open to okay. abuse. So children need to be educated as well. Please mute your mic if you're not talking. Right, children need to be aware of how to be safe online and not to talk to strangers and not to go on to any websites that are not being recommended by their teachers. They should be careful yes. why, why, when they are online. You hear about cyberbullying, you hear about abuse, you hear about people sending inappropriate pictures or videos to people. So the, your class, you need to educate your children as well on how to be safe and how to stay safe online and not talk to unknown uh, individuals. Yeah, that is very true, Miss Fatima, because we're in an age where uh, a lot is going online and a lot of these scammers and hackers are now going in a new dimension that they post enticing things, enticing things that will lure students and uh, people easily. I tell people, be very wary of uh, the sites you go on to. Maybe one of these days, with your permission, I will try to bring up their we should understand that it's not every site that you see online that you should just click. There are some sites that you should know that this site is a scam site or this site is a real site. So yeah, we should I'm avoid such. 
So please be very wary of it. And it will help us a lot if we learn all these things as educators so that we can help prepare our, our students for the changing technological world. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it's exactly um, eight o'clock Nigeria. So um, we've spent one hour discussing this. We've had lots of valuable information. It's been very educative. Thank you so much, uh, Prince Patrick. If there are Thank no more much. questions, we we'll call it a day. Um, Good evening. Did somebody say good evening? Yes, yeah. uh, Martin from <laughs> Kenya. Okay, Martin from Kenya, go ahead. Yeah, I really want to thank uh, the presenter tonight for the session that uh, he has presented to us, especially on incorporating digital education. And especially, I'm very grateful for the uh, item that he presented uh, especially on how teachers can fully utilize digital technology to enhance teaching. Mm -hmm. My humble request is that uh, if you can prepare another session, especially on AI, the use of AI mm -hmm. in education is an area that is coming up and uh, many learners are misusing it, especially yes. when it comes to doing assignments, project work, and maybe how we can overcome it as educators, how we can guide learners to use it effectively in their studies or in their research. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you for the Thank session. you. Thank you, Ma Martin. Thank you very much, so, Ma'am. Um, I don't know if you are aware of, uh, maybe you're a new black belt, but we did have a session on AI a while back. Yes. And all yes. our sessions are on YouTube. One million teachers learning. But it's something that we can revise again in the future, like you uh, asked for. But um, if yes. you would like to know more, you can go to one million teachers learning on YouTube and you will find um, sessions on uh, AI that have been covered in the past. So, uh, but yes, I'm sure Prince Patrick can work on that for his next presentation if you want him to. But there, there are uh, some available, some information already on the One Million Teachers YouTube uh, platform mm -hmm. where we uh, save all the videos of our sessions. Thank you for your question. Okay, mm -hmm. then. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prince Patrick for your very informative uh, session. Uh, we, re we are recording this. It will be uploaded onto YouTube probably tonight or tomorrow morning. I will also sh share it on the One Million Teachers WhatsApp group. So if you're late, if you didn't uh, get to uh, hear again for joining, have a nice evening. Goodbye. Thank you. Good night, everyone.